Thank you very much for having me. I very much appreciate this time. Um, just to give you a little background, you know, my name is Luis Macias, as I was introduced. I started in the software industry trying to figure out not only how to enhance business-to-business -business relationships, but how to automate and function in a way that would be more efficient towards not only business processes, but overall digitizing the process from A to Z. Grain Chain has focused for the last couple of years in doing that in the agricultural industry. As we all know, the agricultural industry is something that has been not as technified as other industries. And there's many, many strong reasons for it. We have a strong lack of connectivity. We have a strong, uh, a, a, a large geographical space to cover when we're trying to digitize this overall environment. So Grain Chain has made it its focus to not only create a digital inclusion among its participants, but how do we enhance the overall process in the supply chain? How do we bring prices up and how do we truly focus on helping the individual small to medium-sized farmer. When we look at the supply chain, the highest risk, hardest work, and, and, and least amount of infrastructure is on the field. How do we build products that create reliable data on the field and, and create systems that ensure that we can push that along the supply chain? Here at Grain Chain, we have focused not only on enhancing transparency and traceability through the supply chain, but creating workflows that don't require a tremendous amount of, of effort. When we look at the agricultural scene, whether it's in the United States, Central America, South America, or anywhere among the world, our agricultural producers focus on their work and have really focused on their tools of the trade and not on capturing of data. And one of the biggest focuses we've tried to have is training individual small to medium-sized farmers to understand that data creates power and power creates a larger, uh, a larger portion of the money among that supply chain. The more information that they can provide the more accurate information they can provide, the better it's going to go for them. At Grain Chain, our focus is giving information to every participant, giving portals to every participant along the supply chain, allowing the individual farmer to not, know, not only know what he has, he or she has, but also giving them historical data, data that they can go back to banks and borrow money, data that they can go back to sellers and buyers and tell them, hey, this is what we've produced and here is the proof of what we have produced. We have created an environment where we not only are able to expedite contracts, executions and traction payments, but we're creating all of the different parts of the supply chain in one solution. What we focused on is is creating an end-to-end -end market solution, something that'll empower our farmers. Starting with our seed audit uh, pre-harvest tool program, it gives free smartphone applications to farmers and allows them to geo-reference their farms. It allows them to record inputs. It allows them to not only achieve to get specialized certifications, which will elevate the level of their crop, but it allows auditor portals and the ability for them to stay within those certifications. It allows for farmers to be able to have conferencing mechanisms to be able to work with different types of helping institutions to be able to get them to understand and train where we go. Similar to some of the speakers that we've heard today, accessibility is the hardest part of achieving uh, uh, training to some of these small farmers. If we have the ability to push this information through a digital format to these individual farmers, we're going to see a higher, a, a higher accuracy in, in, in data. 
one of the things that we have learned over the last 10 years is collection of data is a very costly and difficult thing. But when the farmers have an application that they can push data to individual blockchain platforms where they can push data that have open APIs that can connect to any platform out there, this data starts getting extremely accurate. But how do you create this in an area that has low connectivity, in an area that maybe doesn't even have cellular connection? Creating these tools allow them to be able to download these, these, these platforms when they're connected, when they're, when they're in the cities or around, and they're able to collect all of this data throughout their season when they connect to a, 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 a different type of cellular or Wi-Fi or satellite or low RAN network, we're able to push this data in a very, very efficient form. But we're collecting this data throughout the time. Seed audit gives us that pre-harvest information that starts the seed of information to the end. Our Harvex tool is a tool that allows for logistics management. What we have found is that in our industry, the hardest part is getting the product from the field to the end buyer, to the aggregators, to the different cooperatives or different buyers in the market in an efficient format. If we cannot afford a full truck to load our, 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 our product in, or if we cannot get a, a, a truck to move this product, we're going to sell it to the closest place we can. What we found is by creating this Harvex tool that is very similar to the ride sharing apps of today, it will allow us to allow them to share trucks among different farmers. It will allow us to create the logistics operation into the smart contract so that they can afford to be able to move the product from the field to a further location, which is going to gain them more money. The majority of the middlemen in our industry have a lot to do with logistics and movement. And if we give our small farmer access to logistics, we start giving them the ability to truly grow among the, 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 the overall farm gate pricing. We start giving them the ability to not only have harvest information, but logistics information to be able to push this to the next level. Our SiloSys and SiloSys transformation tools are legacy tool. That's how we started in the agricultural industry. And these tools allow us to connect to a, a variety of IoT devices. They allow us to connect to digital scales, tank sensors, laboratories, laboratory equipment, um, uh, different types of, of equipment. They're going to give us data. And this data all feeds to our smart contracts. If I can tell a smart contract with my pre-harvest tool that these inputs were used, these seeds were used, that it came from this geographic location, that all of this different work went into certifying this product. If I can tell my smart contract with my Harvex logistics management tool that it got picked up in this region, it got dropped off in this region, that all of this happened in a way where systematic data was created. And I can tell my smart contract that Silosis in Silosis Transformation received this product. It weighed this product. It, 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 it got information from a specific laboratory or on site. It read from all of these different instruments what the quality of this data is. I have a payload of information that makes it extremely valuable. With my Silosys tool, not only can I receive the, 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 the products, I can inventory them, I can create reports, I can, I can understand where everything is, and I can give everyone along the supply chain a portal that allows real-time live information of all of this information. That all feeds to our Tremonity platform, which is our flagship transactional blockchain-based platform that creates our smart contracts. How wonderful is it to be able to create a smart contract with a simple wizard asking you questions, asking you questions you know the answers to. What do you want to buy? Where do you want to buy it? When do you want to buy it? What is the quality that you are promising? What happens when you don't give that specific quality? Are you borrowing money on this? 
are we going to include the banks and the lien holders into this smart contract? Do you have a landlord? Do we need to pay a percentage to that landlord? Do you have a partner? Do you have a logistics partner? Do you need to save money of part of this transaction to pay the logistics? Do we need to include uh, uh, export forms, bill of ladens, all of this type of information with simple, simple questions. When all of those questions get completed, a smart contract is created and all of the participants are able to see this in a very clear form, in the formats and in, in, in forms you've seen in the past. You're able to digitally sign these with the tap of a, of, of a button on a cell phone or in areas that don't allow digital signatures, able to upload these into the smart contract. Once this is created, we've created a synergistic system that allows for all of this information to feed and execute. When we execute the smart contract, we're able to move money, we're able to save money, we're able to guarantee payments. We're able to create insurance contracts and we're able to ensure that lien holders get paid when the farmer gets paid. We're able to ensure that landlords get paid the percentages and the amounts that they're supposed to. And we're able to do all of this in seconds, not days or weeks. In the United States, we have smart contracts that execute at 11 a.m. And by 1 p.m., there's physical money in the bank accounts of the farmers. One of the biggest reasons why that doesn't happen every day is because there's forms that need to come in, laboratory results, pre-harvest information, logistics information. All of that needs to be collected before payments are made. When all of this is created in a synergistic platform, then we're able to do that in an instant. We're able to do that programmatically. And the beauty is we have to understand that we have to work with other software systems in the world. We have to open up every one of these modules has an open API that allows you to connect to specific ERP systems, specific accounting systems, banks, different types of logistics management systems, different types of pre-harvest information systems. So either we provide a full solution or we provide parts of a solution. But the idea is to empower our small farmers not only give them a sword, but give them a shield. The sword allows them to have the information to know what their product is worth. The sword allows them to create smart contracts and it gives them the ability to claim the money that they deserve. And the shield gives them historical data. It gives them the ability to prove what they're doing is there. It gives them the ability to protect themselves and get paid when they need to get paid. We at, at Grain Chain have found that we need to provide all of these solutions in order for this to work. We need to be on the ground and we need to give solutions that work with and without connectivity. We need to give solutions that are robust and extremely easy to use. At Grain Chain, we have a big red button approach. If it's harder than pushing a big red button, it's not a system we're willing to implement. Just giving a little, a little depth of, of what these products look like and what they encompass. And, and, and the idea is creating these systems in a way that can communicate to other systems that, that are not only exclusive to grain chain, but can work with any other system in the world. Where in seed audit, we're collecting seed info, fertilizer info, purchase receipts, farm parameters, geolocations. We have a portal for the auditors uh, to create certifications for organics or other types. And agronomists virtual meetings like we're doing now, where they can do it remotely and not have to visit physically. Where when we collect the data, we're collecting geo reference points to ensure that the pictures are taking of that farm. But the farmers are pushing, the producers are pushing the data. We're not collecting it, making it the most accurate data that there can be. With Trumodity is our blockchain-based smart uh, contract platform. We and start to reduce the middlemen. We create an incredible amount of transaction re uh, reliability the traceability is there because all of the data is machine generated. And we start giving the ability for small to medium sized farmers to get into the international trade, create contracts outside of their comfort zone with systems and tools that create all of the correct documents and correct contracts so that they know what they're doing. Our Silosys application, which is our initial uh, uh, legacy application is an all in one solution. It allows us to give real-time information to the farmers, to the aggregators, to the buyers, to the sellers, to the auditors, to whoever we need to push this information to. We're able to see what the stocks are in live 
form. We're able to see what's coming in and what's going out. We're able to manage contracts and we're able to really control what's going on on a day-to-day basis in any one of these facilities, whether it's a one tank or one room facility, or if there's 14 locations that have millions of tons of storage, we're able to track this information and create very viable systems for them to use. With our transformation tool, we're able to take it a step further and create a taste of traceability of transformation in the sense of coffee, wheat, or any other product that goes through a transformation process. We're able to create digital workflows that allow them to to register the process of conversion from a raw seed all the way to the end. We're able to integrate and we've implemented devices that do sorting that, that, that view the qualities that connect directly to internal and external laboratories and manage all of the logistics when it goes uh, from, from point A to point Z. What happens here is that not only is a farmer able to access information and see that they are in the right place, but the buyers receive a payload of information that they're able to push down all the way to the consumer, creating a traceability that is very hard to compare to. When we create this type of environment, our final consumer is able to know that not only did this come from a specific field and from a specific farmer, we're able to ensure that the payments were made throughout our blockchain transaction platform, and we're able to ensure that the process was taken to produce this product that they're paying a premium for that they've received. We're able to push this information all the way down to the final user or to the buyer or to the manufacturer or to the government authority who's ensuring that the right processes are done, or to the certification authority that needs to ensure that they're certifying this product. With our logistics platform, we have a tremendous ability to open up logistics to the small to medium-sized farmer. We're able to open it up to independent truck drivers, all the way down to the, to the, to the cart pusher who's pushing this product all the way to, to different areas. We're able to give the ability for truckers to understand where the fields are, be able to follow all the way in. We're able to track when it gets picked up and when it gets dropped off. And we're able to pay the individual truckers by the mile, by the pound, by the mile versus pound, by the trip. Or we're able to negotiate split trips among multiple farmers so that logistics become a reality and that we don't have middlemen who are taking these logistics paths. How does this work in real life? We start with a smart contract. We're able to give forward contracts to small producers. We're able to negotiate these contracts. We're able to put in requirements of these contracts, whether it's lien holder information or audit information from the field. We're able to use seed audit to verify the information and how it was created. And we're able to use Harbex to be able to push the product from the field to the different locations it need to do. We're able to get Uh, silos to connect to the receiving areas to be able to connect to IoT devices and ensure the implementation of the product. And we're able to execute this product with Trumodity on our smart contract platform. All of these systems work with the software products of today or or or, or, or we create a full ecosystem with grain chain. The whole idea is giving these tools to small to medium-sized farmers and giving them solutions that work for them. Every one of these tools were created through a need, a need of our customers who needed these typical solutions to be able to gain liquidity, to be able to borrow money, to be able to sell their product and to be able to give true and real traceability. Today, Grain Chain processes over 24 different commodities. We've done over 350,000 smart contracts executions and process over 13 billion tons of product out in the market. We're over 12,000 participants deep and we're established in the United States, Mexico, and Honduras. We've just implemented in Brazil and we're currently working on projects to do Colombia and Peru. Our concept is to grow with a network effect and show the world that blockchain technology and real implementation is the solution to technifying the agricultural industry. We've been featured uh, among the world by Forbes and, and, and TechCrunch in different areas in what we're doing. And our true focus is changing the world one small step at a time and flattening the earth. 
where because you are a farmer in the middle of Mexico doesn't mean you can't do business around the world. And because you're a farmer in the small parts of Mexico, Central America, South America, doesn't mean that your information isn't the best in the world. Thank you very much. And I hope you enjoyed this presentation. I'm open up for uh, any questions. Yeah, hi, Luis. Thanks. Thanks for an excellent presentation. And we loved every bit of it. In fact, when you said uh, changing the world one small step at a time, I always keep on quoting in my discussion, changing the world one farmer at a time. So we have very similar views. Um, yes. My basic question would be like, you know, you have been someone who is pioneering the implementation of blockchain, right? And we would like to understand what are the challenges, right? You have, because you work in developed economy like U.S., under developing economy like Honduras, and I'll say that developing economy like Brazil. So how, how do you see the farmers of Mexico, Brazil, Peru, Honduras, and US, right, all at different stages uh, adopting these technologies? And what is the secret sauce of ensuring that? Yes, that's an excellent question. Um, I, I think that we've always taken a conservative approach. Uh, when you walk into a bank and you want and you tell them that you want to execute transaction using blockchain technology, you might as well have created an exit sign. Uh, <laughs> the, 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 the term blockchain has had its positive and negative connotations for the last couple of years. And it would probably be easier for me to walk into a bank and say, I want to execute transactions for farmers and not say blockchain because um, they don't understand it. They don't understand the power of where it could go. And being as conservative as we are and, and being extremely careful with regulation in, in, that's very different in every single country, it's been an obstacle that has been uh, extremely challenging. We've been extremely successful in the United States being able to implement financial systems that not only uh, uh, do the letter of the law, but are able to execute efficiently. We found that... Um, in, in, in developing uh, countries like Honduras, where the systems are not as robust, that people are very open to change because they need it. They need it now. Uh, they need to figure out ways to get liquidity to their farmers. They need to figure out ways to de-risk a lot of this type of transactions. So we find that the, the aptitude or we're very welcomed in those countries uh, because this is something that they've been looking for for a long time. Countries like Mexico and, and the United States that have a little more developed financial system, we find that we have to work a little bit harder to convince them, but it's a lot easier to implement, right? Because you've got open APIs at banks. You have the ability to speak directly to uh, uh, large stakeholders who understand the, the value add. I think that the secret sauce is being able to be flexible, you know, in a country that has a, a federal mandate that allows for digital signatures, which will allow us to execute these smart contracts on a mobile device, but has never implemented a digital signature, is not easy to do. So, so when, you are, when you have laws that help you, but aren't really being put into practice, it becomes, it becomes a, a, a process. Our highest cost of entry to any new region is being able to integrate into the financial system and to be able to apply the local set of laws that allow us to do this type of process. I think that that's changing and it's changing fast. I think that every country is realizing, especially with what has happened with the pandemic, we need tools to be able to reach individuals. Because when you can't physically reach them, and when you can't physically give money, or you can't physically help them without these digital tools, everything changes. Two years ago, I had to sit in a boardroom with, with bank presidents and explain to them what blockchain was and give them the idea of why this is a value add. Today, they say, how can we get money to our farmers faster? How can we do this in a way that lowers our risk? And how can we ensure that we, that we create a full ecosystem? So things are changing very rapidly. I think that this is a, a, a cooperative game. We need to work together with every technology firm out there. We're working with fintechs. We're working with different agricultural providers. We're working with different uh, uh, 
uh, national and multinational corporations. We've, we've partnered with MasterCard. We're partnering with SAP. We've partnered with a bunch of different companies to be able to implement this faster and more efficient with that kind of reach because everyone has that same common goal. Everyone wants to create a, a solid system for our agricultural partners. And that's the area that we all need to push. Again, very, very well articulated, uh, Louis, actually, like, you know, collaboration, uh, network, uh, ecosystem. These are very critical words when we talk about blockchain and especially when you want to deploy technologies in a difficult part of the world where the physical and digital infrastructure both are lacking. Uh, now, that brings me to my next question. I would like to understand from you that in implementing because you said that US, uh, you had less of challenge, right? How do you see now the receptiveness of larger corporation? Because you talked about tying up with SAP and MasterCards. Do you see that uh, they are now understanding the value and as well as capability, which blockchain and agriculture together can make for the overall, I'll say that uh, value for as a business, as well as a society? Absolutely. Um, you know, we've had a, a strong partnership with MasterCard over the last year and a half, whose strong focus has been giving these tools to agriculture. They have recently announced a massive amount of, of monetary push in Africa for, for uh, different types of programs. They've been pushing inclusion programs in Mexico, Central America, and South America. Their, their focus has been let's figure out the right technology to help individuals be part of the formal financial system, uh, help individuals have historicals and bank accounts, help individuals understand that this isn't a scary world, that it's going to help them and, and not hurt them. There, it's a challenge, it's a tremendous challenge. When we start talking to the big, large multinational companies, blockchain is kind of this thing that they know they have to be a part of, but they don't really understand where their role is going to be. When there's uh, the, the, the technology is, is something where uh, when we try to implement in a different region, uh, having that ability to share the information back and forth, having the ability to share information that is extremely accurate and produced by machines, they're starting to see the effect of that. On, on, on their products. We talked about insurance a little while ago and how insurance products are very difficult. We are talking to multinational insurance companies who see this as a future, who see that getting data, systematic data to execute policies is the way to go. And they're, they're working with us to figure out ways to create micro policies for these individuals so they are not so overwhelming, so that we create a small micro policy that gives them the ability to read data and they don't rely on somebody filling out a report. Like you said, we rely on weather data that is established and we create this. We rely on commodities pricing data to create insurance products. And, and, and we auto execute the payment of this data and the execution of the product. And if there's a rejection, it's based off of the data. So now when you have an individual who may not be as versed in the insurance world, they're able to defend themselves by saying, here's the data, it's auto-executed, I got paid. Or, hey, you know what, I didn't get paid because it didn't work this way, and let me, let me understand why. So, and, and with, with products like, like, like Seed Audit that have these communication systems that allow you to explain and give them an explanation from an insurance agent directly to them and saying, hey, you didn't get paid on this because the rainfall hit 13.2 inches and it, the, the policy executed at 13.5. And, and that's the way it is. You know, there's no question about it. But the difference between that and getting a piece of paper filled out by that individual and filling out and, and, and getting that date, that, that insurance policy, or getting an insurance policy that it can't afford because a big insurance policy is not real, but these micro insurance policies are something that can start – helping that small farmer. So when you ask, how do the big corporations are starting to look at blockchain? They know it's the future. They're seeing it. They're seeing it's something that's coming in, but it's something that we have to push by gritting our teeth and climbing up that mountain to get to that top of that mountain before it, 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 it becomes a reality. And we've got to be the people on the ground. And Louise, I, I fully agree and appreciate because I've been trying to push the envelope for more than five years now, whether it is about the, yield predictions or whether it is about right, making the supply chain and value chains more transparent using blockchain. 
So I, I, I can understand, and uh, that's what you rightly said. We need to be people who are pushing, right? And that is how the magic will happen. Uh, I, I thank you a lot for participating in this session, and it was pleasure to host you. And keep doing the awesome work. And I would request keep your eye also on Asia in Africa, right? Uh, we we strongly okay. strongly believe that technology like yours, right, should not be just limited to America, right? Whether it is North or South. Welcome Absolutely. to Africa and Asia. More than happy to collaborate and 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 see what we can do together in these beautiful continents. Uh, over to you, over to you, Neeraj. Uh, 